with a record 19 League of Ireland titles and 25 FAI Cups, Shamrock Rovers are the undisputed giants of the Irish game. In September, the club returned to the group stages of a UEFA club competition for the first time in over a decade, winning a historic first point in their opener against Dewar Gardens. It's something you're proud of, you know, you're, you're representing the club. We've got really fans from all over Dublin, north side, south side. They want their nights out, they want their trophies, they want their cup finals, they want their big European nights, just as much as we do. You're playing different uh, teams from different regions that you're not familiar with, different systems. Sometimes domestically you can, you can understand how teams are going to play weeks in advance because you've played them so often. But in Europe, it's a totally different challenge. We're there now, we want to try and win some games and see where that takes us, but we want to make sure, most of all, that we're back next year and we're back the year after that, and, and uh, this isn't just a one-off experience. Rovers' European history goes back to 1957, when they became the first club in Ireland to compete in Europe. In 2011, they made history again, becoming the first Irish club to qualify for the group stages of a UEFA competition under the management of Michael O'Neill. We managed to win the league under Michael that year. There wasn't to be repeated in 2012, and that's the way it goes. I think from that period, the club definitely went through a transition, definitely had to change. O'Neill's departure as coach in December 2011 marked a significant moment. Subsequent managers failed to rebuild a team capable of winning silverware consistently. In 2016, Rovers turned to two former players, coach Stephen Bradley and sporting director Stephen McPhail. It's been six years now where, where me and Stephen uh, sort of start the same day. We, we had to really work extremely hard to try and implement what we wanted to do. Um, took time, we were fully focused on trying to get the right people into the, into the club and, and making sure we, we set the, the culture uh, the way we wanted it wanted to be every day. I understood that the club needed to go through some real difficult change. It wasn't just change one or two players and everything would be okay. It was We needed to change the whole environment. We needed to change the squad. We needed to, to change the club. And a lot of people would have said, for your first job, don't go near that type of project. But I just felt that they understood how we could do it. So we do that in the gym, yeah. as a group. Yeah. They understand the demands of the game. They understand the needs and wants of the player because at times, it's, you know, it's difficult. Good morning, Gary. Good morning. How are you? Good. Are you all right? Yeah, all right. Well done. But they also understand the demands that it takes to be successful. They've had, you know, great careers. They've all been great players, but great professionals. Under fresh leadership, Rovers are prospering again. A first FAI Cup in 32 years and consecutive league titles, the standout moments in six years of growth. This is hard, Mac. In June, though, Bradley's coaching tenure was cast into doubt following news that his eight-year-old son required urgent treatment. When, we, when he was diagnosed with leukaemia, we, we obviously were really, really shocked and it turned our world upside down in, in the space of a few minutes. Um, and when everything settles down, the, the conversation you have to have with your, with your family, and Josh obviously included, is, is it time for me to step away from the job and is it time for me to, to uh, fully focus on, on Josh and the family? And, and I'm very, very lucky that Josh uh, and my wife and my other kids were adamant that I continue to uh, manage this football club and, and qualify for the group stages for Josh and see can we win another league for Josh. And um, So that's my drive at this moment in time. When I play and run... He's been through a lot, especially this season. He's never wavered um, from anything. We, we feel really together and I think that's, that's really important that we, we try and continue that and try and keep, keep evolving.
With a historic 20th league title in touching distance, Rovers' proud history now acts as their major motivation at home and in Europe. I've seen the transformation, I've seen how we, we did struggle for a few years and then the manager and staff here have been brilliant in rebuilding and they've, they've had a, a plan in place and I think we're on track now, we're at a stage where we're, we're competitive but you know, we, we need to make sure that we, we never stand still, we've got to be improving. I think I'm obviously still evolving, I'm still very young um, but I think you learn um, massively um, from, from tough situations, you learn from every situation but really tough situations, whether that be a performance or result. Um, understanding how to deal with people all around the club. It's not just managing a football team. So you have to evolve, you have to move the times. If you don't embrace the change, uh, you will be the change. The fans, the, the community spirit within the club is brilliant, it's massive. There's a real sense of um, family orientation within the club, which is, which is massive because that's the lifeblood of the club. I love going down there, I love seeing all different ages um, and supporting the club and, and trying to build it and trying to build it as best we can and try and hopefully get to a stage where we're, we're constantly um, competing for, for league titles and, and European group stage. <laughs> 